Hello and welcome back to CIS 125. This is week three of the class. Once again, I'm your instructor, Victor Campos. So we've got brand new things to learn. We've got more drawing to do, more drawing techniques to work on. I'll pass out the Wacom pen tablets a little bit later. Uh, as usual, I like to say, well, we're going to learn something. Maybe we're going to learn it the hard way first, and then we'll learn it a little bit of an easier way. And what we're going to do is just practice with more of these drawing tools. Before that, let me do the um, quick overview of this week's modules. Uh, we're on week three already, which means we had a we had a lesson last week and a homework assignment. Remember, the homework is due the following week on a Tuesday. So last week's homework is due tomorrow. Therefore, you can have today as like a final lab day after the main lecture, if that takes two hours, three hours, one and a half hours, whatever. After the lecture, we'll have some lab time in case you want to stay and work because that assignment from last week is due tomorrow. And if you remember from the last week, it was about tracing these characters. A few of you have turned it in already. A couple of you, I had to give you a note about please fix this or you will not get a good grade. So I did that for a few of you. Make sure you check there. Um, you can check that under the grades section and I believe click on it and it'll give you my note. A couple of you, what you did were you didn't upload the FLA file and the PNG file. Make sure you upload both of those types of files, the editing file, the FLA file, and the final PNG file, the ping file. Make sure you upload both of those. A couple of you, traced some images that you found on the internet. That was not the assignment. Remember from the assignment, I had you download from my examples provided, step number six. If you downloaded a picture off the internet and traced that, you're not gonna get a good grade. You're gonna get a zero, because that's not what I asked for. So there's still one more day to fix a couple of these little things. Those of you that turned it in early, uh, that I didn't make a note for you, uh, I'll do the official grading soon, because it's due tomorrow, but uh, just check on that. Make sure you upload it. Make sure you check my notes here. Everything that's that's here is what you're going to be graded on. If you don't do this, you won't get a good grade. It's easy as that. I'm not grading on artistic ability. I'm grading on technical ability, following instructions and all of that. And the point of that is not to stifle your creativity and such. But if you're in a work environment, if you got hired by a company, a client or whatever, and they want you to do ABC and you do XYZ, amazingly, I don't care. I didn't offer you. I didn't hire you to do X, Y, Z. I offered you to hired you to do A, B, C. So there's still time. Uh, if I gave you a note that you're not going to get a good grade, you can still turn it in uh, after the deadline. That's when I then have to follow the grading procedure here and give you a grade. Make sure you follow the details of that. And if you have any uh, questions about it, of course, check with me or the assistants, uh, and we'll make sure that you're all on track. That's why I'm making these things due on Tuesday where you have one more day to check with me on a Monday. Um, you know, people often check, am I on the right track? Is this working well? Am I missing anything? And I can take a quick look and I say, yeah, you're missing number eight. Don't forget to do that. And then you can get a good grade on it. This week, we have an assignment. This is where then you will be able to create your own original characters. We have a little bit more to learn on drawing, drawing and coloring. And then there'll be an assignment on it but I'll get to that one moment. Let me do the quick preview of the module stuff here. So you're gonna work on an original character this week. Uh, you're gonna turn it in in a different type of assignment. It's gonna be a discussion assignment. The previous assignment was turned in only to me and then I would give you your grade. This one is gonna be turned in in the discussion board where we will all see each other's work. Um, and the point of that is to simulate sort of like a public real world example of this that people are eventually going to see your work and give you feedback and such. So you're going to upload your own original character. People are going to then give you a positive or constructive criticism of it, and you will do the same for your classmates. So this week's assignment, we'll see the details in a moment, but you're going to be uploading your own um, characters, and you're also going to respond to people uh, sometimes people miss that on the assignment. They don't do that part. That's all part of the assignment, which we'll see in a moment. We have more things to learn about with the drawing tools. Adobe Animate is one of my favorite ways to draw because it's got very unique drawing tools, as we will see today. The live session, as usual, uh, gives you a preview of what we're covering. And here's where I said, if you're coming in a little bit late, you want to download that zip file. You want to extract it. You can right-click, extract, 
And we're going to use the example files there in a moment to practice with more drawing tools. We're going to focus on the concepts of fills versus strokes. And when that lesson is over, I will upload any notes uh, and the video so you can replay the video. Under the resources, I have the same links from last week about the textbook, the free textbook. You can check out these chapters on your own. Tell me in the chat box from last week, how many of you looked at any of these chapters that I had on the week two resources? Yes, no, or I'm about to get to it. Uh, tell me in the chat how many of you last looked at some of the items of last week. If you looked at a couple, if you watched one little video, if you're going to get to it, just tell me in the chat from last week. As for this week, um, here's again that zip file that we're using for the lesson. And then I've got three videos for you. One is about five minutes long. Um, it focuses on Adobe Animate, but what it talks about can also be done. I mean, it focuses on Adobe Illustrator, but what is shown there can also be applied to Adobe Animate. Um, again, check these out on your own, but here's a little five minute video on um, tips on creating a, um, a character made out of basic shapes. After the ad. So here's a fun little tutorial how you can take shapes and make a character. So if you want, watch that. It's an extra thing. There's another one uh, by this um, creator, Gendy Tartakovsky. You might not know their name, but you probably know their cartoons. Uh, and he's got a 15 minute video where he talks about his uh, experience in animation and creating characters. Um, so check out that one if you want. And then, very useful one, this one's 20 minutes long. This is good versus bad character design. So this is from BAM Animation. And they go on there explaining about, you've got an idea for a character, what makes a good character, ranging from simple to complex to realistic and not. And uh, it's, a, it's a nice video. Uh, they take an example of a pre-made character and see and show how to make it better. Now, they focus on Photoshop there, but again, any graphic software, these concepts apply. It doesn't matter if it's uh, a particular software or not. And there's an example of here, which of these is more, uh, which of these is a better Simba, the real one or the cartoony one, and explaining the theory of uh, good characters. Well, you're going to make your own characters this week, at least one. And these various videos that I provide to you, I think are very useful. And all of the extra suggested videos are also really good. You should browse a few of them here and there because more knowledge is more good, bad grammar aside, because the more that you learn, the more you can practice, the better you get at this. And kind of browsing around your your stations last week and I looking over some of your shoulders, some of you seem that, yeah, you've, you've been drawing before and it looks really good, but you can still be better. And some of you that are a little bit newer to drawing, starting your drawing journey, the more you practice, the better you get at it. The more influences you get, the better you get at it. Resources for this week. Little responses over here, going to get to it. Yep, they'll be there, going to get to it. Didn't check, getting to it. No, I got a couple. Okay, so yep, they're there. Extra material is always useful, not just what's in the class. You should also be practicing with it, playing with it outside of class just to get more comfortable with the software. All right, the assignment. Again, we're going to do the lesson so that we can complete the assignment, but let me preview the assignment. Now that we have had some drawing experience with Animate, it's time to put that to good use with your own ideas. In this public discussion, you'll create an original character and tell us about it. You will respond to classmates also with constructive feedback. The purpose of this assignment is to simulate an animation or gaming environment where you share your ideas to improve them. A lot of people take these various classes because you want to get into the industry of animation or game design. And that means you're going to work with some kind of a team, two to 200 people to work on a project. And you're not really going to be working always in isolation. You're going to be showing each other your work. You're going to be giving each other tips and advice and constructive criticism respectfully and such. And so this assignment will be, will be turned in so everyone will see each other's work. And it's in two parts, your submission and your responses. Don't forget to do the response part. And I break it down again. Here's what you're going to be graded on, which I also break down under the 
uh, rubric, same thing. Make sure you do these things to get full credits. Some of them are worth a little bit of points. Some of them are worth a lot. There's some nuance in grading in some and others do not have nuance. You did it or not. Basically, what's also going on here? Well, you're going to create a project folder. You're going to create a brand new file. Make sure you get all of these dimensions and so forth. You're going to name it a certain thing. And then you're going to use any fill or stroke tool to draw an original character. We started to work with fill tools last week, the brush tool. This week, we're going to start to work with stroke tools, and we're going to see the difference. Once we see both of those types of tools, you might decide, oh, I like this one better than that one. So pick any of the fill or stroke tools that we will learn, draw the character, and then we'll talk about a few coloring techniques. So use any of the coloring techniques we'll cover today to also color the character. Like last week, you will export it as a PNG file, ping 24, no transparency. In Canvas here, the way this one is done, you click a reply. Rather than submit, like last week, there's a reply. You click the reply so that then you can upload your ping file. There's a button right there to upload my picture, right there. So you're gonna upload the ping file, only the ping file. And then in the same post, add a short biography of the character. Here's your original character. I'm sure it's got an amazing backstory. Or if you're brand new, starting to think about this stuff, you've got over a week to work on this. And you're gonna tell us a little bit about the character, its name, a little bit about where does it live? Um, did you make up a world? And any, if, if, you were, if you had all the resources right now to make a movie about your character, briefly explain a story that your character might be engaged in. The focus of this week is the drawing, but I still wanna learn a little bit about the character that you've invented. How many of you have a character that you've just been doodling your whole life or whatever? Tell me in the chat or raise your hand or whatever. But how many of you have been working on kind of characters throughout your life and here and there? So cool. You can use them for this class if you want. If you don't have any ideas for characters, check with me, check with the assistants, talk with your classmates, get ideas, watch the various videos that I have in the week three resources to get more ideas. And you're going to work on an original character. Now, it can be a character based on a world that exists. Like, oh, I want to create my own character in the world of the Lion King. It was a gazelle over there that you never saw it, but it was back there. You know, whatever you want. But if you want to create original characters from your own original worlds, great. If you want to create an original character on a pre-existing world, that's fine. But I would rather that you create an original character in your own original world. If you have concerns and so forth, Talk with me or the assistants, and we'll talk about it. So then you're going to respond to a couple of classmates. When people start uploading their amazing work, you're then going to respond to them. What is something that you liked about their character? And what is some constructive feedback that you might have? Like, okay, the character looks interesting, but maybe like, you know, what the crown that it wears is a little too big and bulky. It doesn't look cute enough for the character or whatever. Give some feedback that is constructive in your opinion respectfully because you're going to get the same thing your classmates are going to give you their thoughts on your work and you give your thoughts on your classmates work and this is important because if you're in the real world in a real job you're not going to be working all by yourself you're going to sometimes need to talk intelligently about your ideas maybe defend your ideas maybe give feedback to other people's ideas so that's how this assignment will be. We have still stuff to learn today before you can do this. Got the Cyber Cafe and the Q&A. So that's some of that extra stuff that you can participate in. Questions there. And then the week wrap up. So this week we'll cover fills and strokes using the line tool specifically. We used the brush tool last week. We'll use a new tool called the line tool this week. We will use fills. We will, we will color things in fills and using lines. So next week, we're then going to learn more drawing tools, more drawing techniques, and then focus on backgrounds, focus on environments. you got a character, it's got to exist somewhere. And as I said previously, the first kind of lesson on a topic will be do it my way, use my examples. And then the next one will be now do it your way how you want. So make sure you 
pay attention to the details of the assignments. This week is more drawing. Questions or comments in the chat or in real life here before we proceed with today's stuff. And I'll pass out the tablets in a moment. Question. General questions at this point, yes. A question about the holiday. Um, yes, so the holiday is coming up on the 19th. Um, I haven't quite decided yet. Uh, let's ask that again. What do we all want to do here? I asked last week or two weeks ago, whatever. Next Monday is a holiday. Obviously, you're not going to be required to be here. It's a holiday. But I might have the Zoom live anyway. And if you want to come in live, you can come in. Um, if you're going to be at the beach or whatever, be at the beach. Uh, so the question is, uh, do we want to have the, the Zoom on Monday? And then it's optional. Or what's the question? Do we want to have the Zoom or not the Zoom? We have to have the lesson because we can't miss a week of material. So I am definitely going to do something, but I guess the question is, do we want to have the, do we want to have class on Monday or Tuesday? Now, if it's on Tuesday, that doesn't mean you come in here either. We're going to have it on Zoom. So I guess the question is, do we want Zoom on Monday or Tuesday? Tell me in the chat. Monday or Tuesday uh, on, uh, on Zoom. Tell me on there. Monday or Tuesday on Zoom. Question. The votes, just like election night, Monday, 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 Monday. Okay. <laughs> well, unless there's a sudden flood of Tuesdays, um, give it a couple more seconds here. But um, again, it's a holiday on Monday. You're not required to be live on the Zoom. And um, I will do the, the Zoom on Monday. You can be here if you want here. Uh, Thursday is not an option at all. It's Monday or Tuesday. Um, and so we're going to do it on Monday. The people have spoken. And so um, if you want to be here live, you can. If you um, can't make it or are doing the holiday, that's fine. It'll be recorded. And that's when I'll start to cover more drawing, specifically focused on backgrounds. But yeah, we'll do it. No, uh, the homework will still be due on uh, Tuesday. Uh, it's still a pretty good amount of time, even if we did it on Tuesday, but everyone voted on Monday. So um, it'll be on Monday and it'll be then due on Tuesday, which does still give that whole over a week. So everyone um, pretty much voted on Monday. All right, so... Um, Let's get into Adobe Animate here. Let's create a brand new file. Um, you can click the full HD preset right there, full HD, or you can click the new file. Remember, there's like five ways to do everything all the time. Um, you can click new, H full HD, Click create. Again, at any point, if you're having any trouble, raise your hand. Myself or the assistants will come over uh, to keep the class going well. Just raise your hand. There's uh, four of us to here to help you, so you'll get plenty of help. Um, but create a brand new file. Um, and the first thing we will do here uh, is let's change the frame rate. So on the right side, where we have the document settings here, we have the size of the graph of the of the project, we have the frame rate and a stage color, a background color. Let's change the frame rate here to 24. We'll cover why later when we get to animation. We'll, of course, do lots of animation, but in the beginning, it's about the drawing. And then we'll also change our stage color from white. We'll change it to any other color you want. I'm going to go with like a light gray stage color. If you're not seeing these options here, uh, you want to, uh, with your selection tool, you want to select the background, and then you'll see properties, document, and those options. So 
So change those items there. Save our work, file, save as. So save as, you really only do it the first time when you create a file, because you want to then give it a name. And then subsequent times, you just do save. Keyboard shortcut, control S, or on the Mac, command S. For the moment, we need to save this file as, we need to give it a name. Uh, if you brought your USB drive, or, or if you're going to upload it to your Google Drive, organize yourself however you want. I'm going to put it on my desktop. I'm going to create a new folder here. From the less, left side, select desktop. Um, then click the icon, new folder. Call the folder what you want. I'll call it week three. Just call it week three. Create that folder on your desktop. Double click it to open it. Then on the file name, you can put your last name, .fla. So however you want to organize yourself. This is just going to be practice. This is not going to be an assignment. If you want to take a copy of it with you to home, that's fine. If you need help with that, check with me or the assistants at the end of the day how to take your work home. Because as I said, these computers have deep freeze. They will erase themselves when you turn them off. Therefore, all the hard work you did will get erased unless you take it home with you. Check with the assistants how to do that. At the end of the day, for the moment, save it on the desktop in a folder. Click save. To further kind of set ourselves up a little bit here, um, let's get used to this, where on the top right corner, of the stage, so the main piece of paper you're gonna draw on is the stage. And on the top right corner, you have all of these icons here. One of them is the zoom icon. It's often useful to change the zoom here to fit in window right there, so that it kind of zooms out enough so that you can see everything. You can also show frame, show all, it's different zoom levels. Zoom to 100, zoom to 200 to see the details. We have fit in window. I also mentioned previously on the keyboard, if you hold down the control key and then scroll your mouse wheel, you can also zoom in and out at the point that your mouse is pointing at. That might be useful to zoom in and out for details. So I'm holding control on the keyboard, scroll on a, uh, on a laptop. It's slightly different. I have to double check what it is. But fit in window is very useful to see everything. When you're really in a zone of drawing, you really want to focus on the drawing sometimes. So sometimes these other panels and such get in your way. You can hide your panels temporarily to just focus on the drawings. If any of you have experience in Photoshop, and I think Illustrator does it too, there's a keyboard shortcut in Photoshop to hide all your panels. Anyone know that one? It out or type it in the chat. Does anyone use Photoshop and you know the you know the command to hide all your panels? It's the same one in Animate. If you don't know it, it is tab on the keyboard. If you press tab, wait a minute, mine's not doing it. Is yours? If you press tab on the keyboard, does it do it? No. Okay, never mind what I said then. Uh, Adobe, you changed it. You change the change the shortcuts on me. Okay, where is it at? Uh, oh, there we go. F4. Okay, it's F4. That's what I meant. On the keyboard. Press F4, and you will see that all your panels hide. So that's the key at the very top of the keyboard, F4. All your panels hide, and that way you can really focus on your drawings. Turn it on and off, F4. It's also up on the window menu. Window, blah, 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 hide panels. But there's going to be so many keyboard shortcuts to really save you time and effort. One of them is F4, so that you can really focus on the drawing. Now, Adobe Animate is a vector-based drawing tool, not Victor, Vector, V-E-C-T-O-R, Vector, which basically means all your drawings are, are uh, based on calculations, formulas and such. So behind the scenes, there's calculations to make the various lines. That differs from other drawing software that is raster-based, so vector-based, raster-based. 
uh, one it's they do different things one is not better than the other but animate is vector based which means you can draw something really small and blow it up really big and still retain great quality you can start a drawing that is one inch big and then output it to be as big as a billboard and it'll be perfect quality because it's vector based if it's raster based if you draw a drawing that is one inch big and you try to make it huge it'll look horrible have you ever been to a restaurant that you look at their menu and all the pictures look pixelated and weird and choppy and just weird most likely it was a it was a raster based graphic and when they printed it it looks horrible this software is very high quality is very good at making high quality graphics if you draw really small and resize it it'll have good quality and another thing about this software is that it's got two sorts of main drawing tools. Let's jump over to the brush tool, classic brush tool. And, you know, we have the, the brush tool. We have its various properties on the right side. Um, pick any color that you want. And on the size, let's go somewhere like um, 12 or something. You have a size like that. When we were using the pen tablets, we had that cool pressure sensitivity so that the line had various had variability to it. It had a character to it. Right now, the lines are just simple one thickness right there. Um, minimum size. Now, let's do this. Let's draw a square. Let's draw a big square. On your screen, jump over to the paint bucket tool, select a different color, and click inside your square to fill in the color. So I drew an outline with the brush tool in one color, and then I drew, and then I filled in a color with the paint bucket with another color. And we saw this last week that with the select tool, if you click one time on a on a color, it selects it and that is one selected thing that you can manipulate. If you click one time on the outline, it selects it and then you can manipulate it. I want to select both so I can make a selection over everything move everything. Sometimes you're able to double click, might select it all or not. But if you make a selection, you've got everything. That's from a single click and then a move. We saw that if you move your mouse close to an edge and you wait for it to change the icon like that, now you can manipulate it that way. And so you've stretched out the edge like that. Okay. And then if I further go on this edge over here and move my mouse to this point and click it and drag it, okay, moving that, it's interesting. I would have thought that because I've got one vertical line right here, oh, I can just select that whole line and move it over. Now something else weird happened. Okay, that's weird. But the point here, if I zoom in, technically the way Animate is seeing this is you drew a line here, but there is an in my case, there's a right side of the line and there's a left side of the line. And zoomed in here, it's very obvious there's a right side and the left side. If I'm zoomed out like that, okay, it's just a vertical line, but no, there's an outside and there's an inside. And when I drag the outside of it, that moves, okay. When I drag the inside of it, that moves. And weird things happen. Let's say I drag this right side over all the way to the left. Drag, drag all the way to the left. Huh, okay, so now I've kind of stretched out that line all the way over there somehow. This line down here stretches there. Stretch that line, and I'm just kind of experimenting with things. Now that point right there, the icon over here, this is a curve, and the point here, that's a that's a corner. Just kind of stretching things around in weird ways. I started off with a straight line, or uh, a straight edged square. As I manipulate these around, 
getting these shapes that are morphing. And in my case here, where I overlapped this color onto both edges here, now this top piece is its own shape. I can separate. This bottom piece is its own shape. Okay. If I further select this piece that I manipulated and I drag it and drop it on top of the shape over here and I click elsewhere to deselect, I'm just kind of moving things around. And now if I select that shape again and move it away, oh, it cut away. It cut away what was originally there. The thing that I'm getting at is with this drawing software, Animate sees this as calculations and such, but also based on their colors, this purple color, if I drag it and drop it on top of this green color, and I deselect, I click elsewhere, or press escape on the keyboard to deselect, I put one color on top of another color, and if the colors are different, the color that you put on top kind of cuts the other color. So this used to be a little square, and now it's two pieces because the color overlapped it. And the part that was below it got replaced by the top color. And if I drop this on top of that and then press escape to deselect, this top color cut this bottom color. And now I've got this piece up here and this piece here. It's kind of weird to think about if you've never used this kind of software, but the various colors, they kind of cut each other. They interact in interesting ways. As long as they are different colors, you get this phenomenon. If they're the same color, so look at all of these green pieces. If they're the same color and I click on this piece, drop it on top of that piece, click this piece, drop it on top of that piece, click this piece, drop it on top of that piece, escape to deselect, they've all now become one piece. They've all joined into one big piece now. That started off as the inside color of a square, which has now been all manipulated over here. Do this. It's not a square anymore. But this is very interesting because as you create these characters, especially if you look at the tutorial where it shows you how to draw fake Robocop based on different shapes, you can take a circle, cut the circle, put the two halves together so one's a head, one's the jaw. Take a rectangle, cut it into pieces to make an arm. Definitely watch that tutorial. It's about five minutes. And I'll show you how to do that here in a moment. The idea is that these pieces, these colors, they're mathematically calculated and uh, they are manipulated in different ways. I'm going to do this color on top of that color and then I will select the eyedropper. Try this, select the eyedropper, click on one of these colors that grabs the color. And then with the paint bucket, if I click here, click here, okay, I filled it in. I didn't fill in this little piece right here. This is why we selected a gray background. If it was a white background, sometimes as you fill colors in, you don't notice what is, a, what is whole, what is an empty part of the drawing. If you choose a different color besides white, you'll see some detail. So fill in that missing color. This weird square has become this blob here, this color kind of spilling out. But all of these green colors, if I click, it's all one shape. If it was even slightly a different green, even 1% different, it would look so similar, but it's not the same color green, but then 1% different is different, and therefore the colors would not merge. That's why it's often important to use the eyedropper, grab the color you need to work with, and it grabs it exactly correctly, because if this was a color that was, you know, 1% different, that's two, that's still two different shapes there. That color looks exactly the same, but it's not. I changed it by 1%. And even though that looks like it should merge, it's still a separate color. 
This is like very theoretical stuff for the moment. We'll see how it applies hands on. If I want to start over here, there's a couple of ways. If I want to select everything on screen, let's try this. Maybe you drew something amazing, but we're practicing. So if you click one time on this, um, we haven't really gotten to the concept of frames yet. But if you click on this frame right here, it selects everything that you drew. See how it's all got that little highlight. If you click, click the frame and then on the keyboard, press delete. That's going to delete the whole, that's going to clear the whole layer. That's one way to clear a layer. Really like what you drew. Okay, make a new layer. Hide the old layer. I'm going to delete everything on my layer here. So you can click on the frame. You can also do um, right click, select all, and then press delete. To switch back to the brush tool, let's draw a robot. Whatever that means to you, get, get the drawing tool, the brush tool uh, with any color. Keep it simple for the moment. Draw a robot with any shape of the brush tool. Take a moment to draw a robot. Definitely, I could do something much better with the draw with the pen tablet. We'll get those out in a moment. Just draw a robot. All right, so wherever you're at, we've got a robot. Now, I drew this with the uh, brush tool with a gray color. Actually, I would like this to have a black outline. So again, this drawing software, I want to change all my lines here. Um, and there's several ways to do this. So if I go to the select tool and click one time on one of these lines, then its properties appear on the right side. I have currently selected an object. Animate sees these things as objects. And then I see, okay, this has got a color and style. The fill is currently set up as that gray, but I want another color so I can easily change the color. I've selected and they change. Well, not everything changes, of course, because not every line is touching. So then now the, out, the eyes and the mouth have not changed because they were not selected. In a very simple case like this, doing the right click select all so that then I can go in. Now it says you've got multiple colors here. But once I've selected everything, then I can easily go in here and change the color to something else. So I drew this character. Now, the... Um, the lines can be changed very easily at any point. Select them and then change the properties. I'm going to fill in some colors. If at any point you try to fill in colors and then the, the color doesn't fill in, that means you have a gap somewhere. So I'm trying to fill in my colors. Everything's coming in nicely. I'm trying to fill in the colors of the of the claw over here, but it doesn't because there's a gap here. So either I need to go back to the brush tool and finish drawing that little gap, or I can use the select tool. And I like this way better, use the select tool. Right away, I would say with the selection tool, turn off this magnet. Usually it's very annoying. See at this moment, my select tool has that magnet highlighted. 
these two are off, these two are on. Uh, at the moment, magnet is on, snap is on. Sometimes that's useful when you're trying to bring the lines together. I find that not useful most of the time. I would turn it off, even though now it looks like it's highlighted, it's off. And the point of that is that when you turn off the magnet, then when you try to manipulate these lines, they will kind of obey, obey you more. They'll actually be moved where you want instead of snapping where it thinks you want. The point of that is make sure every line is fully connected so that then when you fill in color, you can actually fill colors. <clears throat> Jump back to the selection tool, select your whole drawing, right click, select all. And then we have these options over here that are really nice. Shape options, smoothen, straighten. It does exactly what it tells you there. You've drawn some lines that were not as smooth as you like, click smooth in once or twice or 10 times, and it'll smooth in your drawings more. If you want straight lines, you know, this is a very robotic character. I need very, very straight lines, maybe straighten the lines. Now it does go overboard sometimes. That's why there's undo, control Z. If I click smooth one time, those lines got a little bit smoother, click it twice, even smoother, and you can go several times, deselect. So I drew it roughly first, then I click smooth like four times in my case, and oh, those lines are nice and smooth. I like how it kind of made that more like a sharp claw right there. I need to open cans, I guess. Uh, this leg isn't looking quite right, but that's sometimes useful to have it. Oh, and it really messed up the little antenna. Now I can't receive Wi-Fi, uh, but it really smoothened out that line. <clears throat> the problem, of course, is everything you do in Animate is an undo, even a deselect. When I clicked away, I have to undo that to reselect and then undo one smooth, undo another smooth, undo another smooth, undo another smooth, another one. That was too far. So then I can do edit, redo. And to check the other example, instead I'll, I'll make it do a straighten. Let's see how straighten looks. Straighten once, twice, <laughs> too many times. I don't know how it would straighten it that way, but that's kind of interesting there. So I could still go in and further refine these lines. I really like these little claws that it made, but then I can go in with my select tool and then start to push and pull these shapes around a little bit. I could go in with the eraser tool and start to erase some of these things. The eraser tool is weird because it looks like, well, I'm going to erase with white. When you let it go, it then fixes it. Maybe you drew something, but you only want to smooth in a piece of it. Mm -hmm. I did select all to smoothen everything or to straighten everything. You can select pieces to do the smoothen or straighten. If you use the select tool to make a selection here, only of that claw, and then go to the smoothen or straighten, only that gets affected. Want to select this leg. But of course, be careful with a square shape like this because whoops, I'm also going to smoothen the body. That's too much. We have more than one selection tool. We have this lasso selection tool. Lasso selection will let you draw perfectly a shape of this claw only that is selected. Lasso tool. This lets you select big pieces. This lets you select little pieces. There's something transform here. We'll see that later. So this is a really cool feature where I've tried to draw and maybe I'm not so great at it yet, but then I let animate smoothen it for me. Then, or straighten my lines. I can still go in manually and make more changes. I like this antenna, but it'll look more fun like that. This is where I'm going to obsess over every pixel. And again, if you've got the time, go ahead and obsess. But if you've got deadlines, do you need every pixel perfectly, perfectly obsessed? Yeah, we need that perfectly straight. There we go. I spent 10 minutes on it. It's it's 
it's uh, it's ready, but the deadline's here. There's teeth. Oh, I got to fix that tooth. So again, um, there's a limit to the amount of time that you have. That's why there's deadlines, like in the real world. So we're getting to our first break here. Um, just play a little bit with the brush tool, selection tools, try the smooth in for a moment, just play with it for a moment if you want, or take a break. It's 12.55. We'll take a break until 1.05. Um, I will also pass out the drawing pen tablets if you want one. You're not required to have one. If you want one, I'll pass them out. This time we're doing it slightly different. Please give me your ID. Either your school ID, driver's license, bus pass, whatever. And then I'll give you the pen tablet that you can use in class. These are optional with this one pen one. Wait for about 10 minutes. Grab a tablet if you want. That sounds good.
sort of just a moment to final call if anyone wants a uh, Brian Cowan. I'm going to pass out today's sign in sheet, mentioning legibly on this. So, thank you. Along with the pen. And let's continue here. So, I was just drawing a little robot guy with a brush tool, filled in some colors and such selected it and did some smoothing, some straightening. I got something interesting out of it. Uh, I'm going to move on from this in one moment, but I want to show something here. I kind of like what I got here. It kind of changed the shapes in weird ways. Kind of interesting. But in my case, it did a really weird thing that the whole body, it went just completely one red color. I want the red outline, but then like a central teal color. It kind of did it in a weird way. But this is kind of cool because here's what here's what I can do. I can redraw the inside part of it. And I'm going to show you in a really weird way. It always it kind of depends on what you've got. Watch this. Uh, what it also did was, in my case, it also kind of uh, put this the the body color off in a weird way over here. But I can use this. I can click on this piece to select it. Then I can put it in here somewhere, maybe like right here somewhere. Deselect, and then from that. I can grab the corners to kind of pull it up here, pull it over here. I just got very lucky with what it did here and then pull it here and oh, I got an inside part now. So a moment ago, it kind of simplified it in a weird way, but I want that in, inner body color. And in my case, because I saw this like wayward piece of color over here, every every piece of color that you make can further be manipulated. So. I grab this piece of color, dropped it in here. I can, you know, put it right here in the center of the body, deselect, and then I can go to the corner of each of these pieces and then just pull these pieces to where I want them to be. This is a very interesting uh, drawing tool. Again, it's all mathematically calculated behind the scenes, but then it just does something. If I don't have that piece to work with, I can do something very similar. Um, I can get, for example, I can start um, with the brush tool, classic brush tool, and I can start to draw that inside shape manually, something like that. Now, again, you need the exact color. If it is a slightly different shade of green and I start to draw that inside color, it's not the same color as the outside shape. Um, it's often very useful to first select go to the eyedropper tool, keyboard shortcut, the letter I, and then sample or just grab the color that you need, then switch to your brush tool. And now I'm gonna to start to draw that inside shape. Now this inside shape here in this case isn't as smooth as I would like it to be. Well, that one inside color, I can go with the select tool. I can click one time on that inside bit of color and then hit it with smooth or straighten a bit get some interesting results out of that. And then, once that has been kind of set how I want, that's when I can then fill in the missing color. Side color there, eyedropper, sample the color, paint bucket, drop the color in. That inside color. So different ways to do the same thing. You'll little by little start to learn this, the more that you practice with, with the software, let's say up here on the face of the, of the um, robot, I, I kind of like how it made a really hard edge and then that curve, but I don't like that the curve really, it's kind of like touching the, the bottom of the mouth there. I wish it was separated. That may take a little bit of effort to fully fix, but with the selection tool, I can see, well, what happens if I kind of, you know, go to the corner here, because I see it as a, as a line going through, but Animate doesn't. Animate sees it as a line coming this way, then coming back, then going up, then to the right, then down, then going over. It doesn't see it as a line like that. It sees it as following the contours. 
So I could get the select tool and see what happens if I grab that corner and drag it over here. There we go. So then that touched in that way. And now in my case, this went over in a nice way. That mouth is no longer touching there. And I can um, kind of separate this stuff. Let's say I want to move the mouth over here a little bit. Okay, move the mouth. But then now the, but now there's an empty color there. No problem. Eyedropper, grab the color. Paint bucket, fill in the color. So I see it as a mouth, but Animate sees it as shapes and pieces. And if I were to select this mouth, it's not a mouth, it's a shape, and move it elsewhere, well, now it leaves a bunch of pieces that are empty. Paint bucket, fill it in. That. So we just get used to how all of that works as we keep practicing with it. This has all been done with the uh, brush tool, which is known as a fill tool type. We're going to switch over to a stroke type in just a moment here. So whatever you're drawing here, go ahead and save it, and then we'll create a brand new layer. So whatever you're we're doing with this practice file, uh, let's uh, create a brand new layer. On that original drawing we were practicing with, let's change the name of that uh, to call that fills. So lowercase one word fills, double click it, fills. You also want to click on the icon that appears in the column of the lock right here. You want to lock that layer. On the new layer that you create, call that strokes. Hide your fills layer. Do this a lot. Create layers, lock layers, hide layers. We're going to manipulate various layers, various pieces of a design. When we get to the part of animating later, you can have a layer that is the background location where your character exists. You can have a layer where your character is. You can have another layer with clouds, you know, etc. But for the moment, strokes. The difference here is a different tool. Switch over to the... Um, to the pencil tool. Where did they hide that? The pencil tool. Uh, I think. Hmm. So they change the software once in a while and. We moved this tool. Okay, we'll do it this way. Actually, assistants, tell me in the chat if you can look it up. Where did they put the pencil tool? So look for the pencil tool unless I unless I don't see it. We need to use the pencil tool for this assistant. So put it in the chat where I'm what I'm missing here. We'll get back to that in a moment. But before we do that, uh, notice this also. In our layout here, I have the single column of tools. You can go to the edge of the tool tool panel here and grab that edge to stretch it over. Sometimes that's useful to have them in a double column. That even stretch it out even further if you want. The single column is one of those um, defaults, but if you stretch this over, you can pull it over. Now the it is, but where is the click? Oh, it's over here. Oh, here it is. Yes. yes. Exactly. That's what I was looking for. Thank you for that. Yes. So, uh, so here's what I'm looking for. Uh, sometimes these tools um, are rearranged and so forth, and they, they get hidden. So uh, here's where I was. I couldn't find it. Uh, if you have the single one, call, there's, this is the keyboard shortcut, which is what I wanted, but instead of a keyboard shortcut, um, on the tools here, there's so many tools that there might be these three little dots, edit toolbar. There's some tools that are hidden. So this one that I wanted to use is hidden. So from the three dots of your, of your column here, you've got these tools that are hidden that we'll get to later. And one of them, the one that I want to use at the moment is this one, pencil, which has um, shift Y uh, as a keyboard shortcut and another type that is paintbrush tool, which is Y, but we'll get to that one later pencil tool. So any of these tools that are hidden, um, 
once you find them there, it says drag and drop tool. So you can fully customize your interface. And if you're going to use this tool a lot, you might as well reactivate it because it's kind of deactivated it, deactivated within the three dots here. So click the three dots, find the uh, pencil tool and drop it somewhere in your tools, maybe over here somewhere. And I got this pencil tool. This pencil tool is another drawing tool. We'll see how it's different compared to the brush tool. Close the three dots. I'm going to use the pencil tool. So make sure you found that. Raise your hand if you didn't find it. We want everyone to have this pencil tool. Pencil tool. So on this brand new layer strokes, we have this pencil tool. And if you start to draw with it, okay, it's a simple pencil line. I drew a curve here, but then it made a perfectly straight line. Um, this has its own properties. Properties of the tool of pencil. We have these various options here. We have this one, object drawing mode, pencil mode. From, pen from pencil mode here, we have straighten the lines for me automatically, smoothen the lines automatically for me, or just make them as wobbly as I drew them. If you leave it on straighten and you kind of try to draw a horizontal line, it'll say, nope, let's straighten that for you. That's nice. I can't draw a straight line, so this will do it for me. Perfect. That's automatic there on the pencil mode there. If I want to draw nice curved lines, change it to smooth. I kind of have a curved line there. It'll kind of smoothen it a little bit more. I'm using the mouse at the moment, so it's more obvious. With your pen, it works nice. And then if you set that to ink, it, every imperfection that you drew basically is, is there, including this little bit there. So that's something new to, to use. That is not in the brush tool, but it is in the pencil tool. So different tools, different abilities. Whichever one you like, I'm going to go with smooth, pencil style smooth. Now with the pencil tool, we have here color, but hey, a moment ago when I had the brush tool, that said fill color, but with the pencil tool that says stroke color. You can still pick a color that says stroke on pencil versus fill on brush. And then we have stroke size, different sizes here. Styles here. Basic style. Dotted lines. The width of that. Scale, etc. It depends on the sizes of things. Draw a dotted line like that. That'll look perfect because I'm going to draw a ghost. So, of course, I need dotted lines for a ghost. It's transparent. Here's what's interesting about the um, this brush tool. Um, it's still, then, I can fill in colors, draw a little ghost. But if I try to fill colors in here, it's not letting me because my lines are not connected. You see, of course they are. I'm looking at it and everything seems connected. The brush tool or the, the line tool, the pencil is interesting um, because it, it looks like lines are connected, but they may not be. And especially if you use a different type of a, of a style. For the moment, I'll get back to that. For the moment, let's keep this on the basic hairline style or solid, any one of those. Go with hairline. Um, change any size you want. And I'll, I'll come back to that. Why, why is the line not fully complete? I'll get back to that one moment. But with the, with the line tool, set it to some size, 11. Keep the style just regular, solid for the moment, any color. Now, draw a robot again. So the practice you had a moment ago of drawing this robot, do it one more time. Since you're doing it again, it might even be better than last time. This time with the 
with the pencil, draw a robot. Pencil tool, draw a robot with a solid line. Right, so let's say I draw some amazing robot here. Um, I also then want to fill in colors. <laughs> so the um, paint bucket will also work here. I can start to fill in colors. But here's where I might find out that some of my lines are not connecting. Like right here, I'm trying to, I'm trying to fill in color to this foot and it looks like the lines are connected. And even if I zoom in, I'm zooming in here. I'm zoomed in 2,000%, and that's connected, but I'm trying to click it, and it's not coloring in. Here's the thing with this particular tool. It's like I drew these lines and that they're all connected, but the lines, everything that we're drawing in Animate is mathematically calculated, and technically, the calculation isn't correct where the lines touch. Now, what does that mean tangibly? Um, at the moment, if I go into this mode over here, I'm going to see that there's a broken line right here, right there. Now, what am I doing here? My um, drawing had a thickness of 11, and it looks like all the lines are overlapping. But technically, the line is only that big. So if it's, you know, if it's 11 pixels thick, it's five on the outside, five on the inside, one in the middle, 11. So only the middle part of the line is what matters technically. So even though it looked like it was all touching, it wasn't. It's off by like two pixels. So what I'm doing here is um, I'm going into outline mode. You see, you've got these icons, these three columns, lock the layer, show or hide a layer, outlines. So normal mode, see all the edges, the styling. Outline mode, only show me the most thinnest line so that then I can see, oh, there's a broken line over here. And I still have to zoom in this far. So that line is not connected. So I'm going to grab the line and pull it so that it crosses. It doesn't have to touch. And it's even better when they overlap a little bit. And you will see that once you're in this outline mode. It looks like everything's perfect on regular mode here, but not until I go into outline mode that I see that broken line. If you're trying to drop colors in and it's just not coloring, go to outline mode, check your edges. Okay, right there, that hand, that little claw. It looked perfectly connected in regular mode, but colors were not filling in until I go into outline mode. Oh, there's no connection there. Go to the selection tool, grab that line there, make sure it overlaps nice. And I would recommend a little bit of an overlap. Back to normal mode, fill. Definitely there's a big gap right there. So selection tool, grab that, make sure it overlaps a little bit. We'll fix those details later. Also doing a technique here where I'm zoomed in some amount. You see how I'm quickly scrolling through my image. When you're zoomed in, you might say, okay, well, I'll grab these sliders and move around. Sure. But if you hold down the space bar, you temporarily get this hand. And then with the mouse, you can click and drag to move around. 
So I'm in the I'm in the drawing tool, but holding down the space bar for a moment gives you the hand so that you can move around, draw a little bit, space bar drag to move over, draw a little bit more, space bar hand move over. On the readings that all of you said you're going to get to, in there, there's a uh, spot in there that starts to tell you all about the uh, all about the uh, the various tools. And then we have a nice note there. Thank you, Alex. So we've also got a note in the chat. Here's the keyboard shortcuts. Follow that link. That's also where all the shortcuts are at. We've also got a nice note here. Thank you, John. Middle mouse drag also works. So, oh, there we go. That's nice. So I might be in the, I might be in the pencil tool. And then on the mouse, um, I can hold down the the center scroll wheel and that becomes a temporary um grabber that's nice so this central wheel does so much you know you scroll up and down you hold down control and you zoom in and out and you also press it and hold it with the mouse and you move over now if i'm using the the pen tablet well i'm on the pen tablet and it's got its own keyboard shortcuts on the left as well which you can explore Oh, I filled in these colors because my shapes are solid. Okay, so um, got a robot. We drew this on a new layer. Let's make a new layer. Um, call this sphere. I'm going to lock my robot layer, hide it as well. And then on this new sphere layer, with the brush tool, going to draw a circle. Fill it in with some color. Have any of you, tell me in the chat or raise your hand, have any of you taken any art classes at our college? A few of you, okay. So you probably covered in there um, shading and such. And with shading, uh, it's often based on a light source. If you haven't taken those classes, um, basically the theory of coloring uh, digitally and such is there's a light source. And there's a lot of nuance, but to keep it simple, Imagine that there's a light source over here. So here's a light bulb, and it is casting its light. So the, the light bulb is casting its light. Very simply, and we can get way more complex, but very simply, the light that is hitting this side of the object is going to brighten the colors, the tones of the object, and the um, opposite or away from the light source is going to be darker. Again, there's lots of nuance. This takes a lifetime to master. But very briefly, if there's some sort of light source and it's hitting some object, it's going to brighten an area of that color. And where it's furthest from, it's going to be darker. So to keep it simple, imagine or draw yourself a light bulb or a, the sun or a flashlight or a candle or something just on the left side of my sphere. On the left side of my sphere, the light is coming from the left. It's moving to the right, keeping it very simple. There's going to be an area that is going to be brighter and an area that's going to be darker. So I drew this sphere. I want to, with the brush tool, have a brighter version of the color closer to the light source and then a darker version of the color further from the light source. So let's get advanced here. With the eyedropper, I'm going to sample my original sphere color under the colors and style properties. Click your fill color. And then you have this little color wheel. 
which is also a color mixer. I want a brighter version of that color and then eventually a darker version. And we can get that by, you know, first grab your color, click on fill, click on that little color wheel there. We have then several ways to mix a color. HSB, RGB. B, brightness. If you select the little B for brightness, my current color now, I can select a brighter version or a darker version. This is one basic way of coloring and shading and such. I started with my original color, whatever formula it was, apparently 2041020. And I switch over to this brightness and I pull this up. And I've got a brighter version of that color. Click OK. And then with the brush tool, I'll just draw a simple kind of like highlighted area. This takes practice and so forth, and we will get practice. But a brighter version of the color, closer to the light source. I need a darker version of the color. Back to the eyedropper. Click the, the, the base color. Go to the fill tool. Click, go to the, or the fill option. Go to your uh, color wheel here. Make sure you're in the B for brightness. This original color, now drag it down some amount for a darker color. And with the brush tool, paint on the opposite side. Shadow area. My projector looks horrible. You should get the colors more extreme, but you can kind of get the sense that there's a brighter portion closer to the light source and there's a darker portion further. Of course, there's a lot of nuance. There's a lot of practice. How do I blend it? All of that stuff. Uh, question over here. Uh, can someone help uh, Angel over here, actually? Or yeah, you have a comment or a question? Yes. So here we've got a brighter, here we've got a darker version of it all. And I can get way more complex with way more complex characters and so forth. But I've started to kind of make things shaded a little bit. Now, my problem, of course, is I started to draw the shading and I spilled over to the outline. I may or may not want that. I don't want that, but I spilled it over too much. I probably have to undo it and redraw it because... Now, this color here, Adobe, you know, I see a sphere that is colored, but Adobe sees one, two, three, four blobs of color. There's the outline, one. There's the base color, two. There's the highlight color, three. There's the shadow color, four. It's four blobs of color. It doesn't see a sphere. It's blobs of color which then I can further go in and manipulate interesting ways. So this has been colorized a little bit. I hate it, so I'm going to do it over. So I'm going to select everything and delete it. Draw another circle. Fill it in with another color. Sometimes, yes, starting over does give you more practice with all of this. And the difference this time, watch this for a moment. I'm going to, um, I'm going to get the, I'm going to get the brighter version of my color. Let's see, a brighter version. And instead of trying to color, and whoops, I got outside the lines. Um, we have these various modes that I can activate. Right now, as I try to draw my bright color, I go all over the place. Watch this. On this, br on this brush tool, we have these modes right here on the second icon, brush mode. Paint normal, paint fills, paint behind, paint selection, paint inside. Hmm. If I go to, instead of paint normal, paint inside, and I start painting right here. Watch this. I'm going to paint like a big old mess here. But then when I let it go, you know, paint it inside of those shapes. It never went outside of my shapes. Again, that's the brush tool. But now changing the mode here from paint normal to paint inside. 
And so I start painting inside and I go outside all over the place, but then when I let it go, it calculates it and it only stays on the inside. The trick here is, watch this, I'm painting all over the place, I let it go. Hey, it only painted my, out, my outlines. This mode, paint inside, is literally where you start to paint inside of a fill, only keep painting inside of that fill. So when I selected the inside and I start to paint inside of this color and then I go, whoops, my, my finger slipped. And then when I let it go, it's only inside of where I started painting. If I started painting on the outline and I just go all over the place like that, and then I let it go, oh, it only painted that little piece of the outline. So let's say I'm drawing an amazing character and I want to do that technique where the outlines are a certain color, the inside's another color instead of a black line. This is a technique. Switch to the brush tool, select paint inside. As I start painting inside of a particular fill and I go too far out, problem, it's still gonna only paint that piece. Paint fills only. This is very similar to that, except here. That's a fill. That's a fill. That's not a fill. So it didn't paint out there. That's the mode paint fills. Fills. Paint behind. Uh, I start painting here and I go all the way to the background over here. I let it go. I painted behind the object. Behind. Paint selection. On that one, you have to first make a selection that's selected. Then I switch to the brush tool. Um, and then uh, when I have the selection and I paint there, it's only in there. If I make a selection that is that piece right there, select brush tool, paint selection. Well, I paint over here, sit on the part that I selected. So many modes, so many techniques. Now, if I want to draw it again, left side brighter, dark side darker, or left side brighter, right side darker. Okay, my technique will be, I'm going to do the paint inside so that I don't accidentally spill the color out further than I want, paint inside. I'm going to select my brighter color. I'm going to change the size of my brush just so that I, it's easier. And I'm going to paint over here without too much regard of going past the lines. Then I'm, I'm making this colorization here that doesn't go over the edge. Go back to the base color. Mix a darker color. Brush tool, classic brush tool, paint and sides, make that brush larger. Paint there, go too far, no problem. It'll automatically calculate it properly. The colors inside the shapes. Want that even smoother? Okay, so select a piece of color. Go to smooth. That's smooth. Select that piece, make it smooth. We'll cover blending later. Now we're doing these hard cell sh cell shaded style of draw of painting and coloring. But here I have the brighter part of the design and then the darker part. Yeah, I get fancy with a specular highlight and a shadow on the ground and everything. Shadow on the ground. Well, if I have the paint behind, just drew a big swath of color like that, even though I drew on top of my drawing, but it painted behind the, the fills there. Now it looks like I've got a shadow on the ground. Little bit of depth. I 
So moving up from a sphere, I want to make a new layer. A character. Brush tool. I want to draw a character. Or a character you want. Draw a cat or something. Wanting to draw cats, but then I get foxes, I guess. Something. fix that later, but I got something. I want to fill in some colors. So I drew it as a blue, but then the fox colors, I'm trying to fill in color here, but there's no, but there's a, there's a gap somewhere. So I have to zoom in. Where's the gap? Oh, right here. It looks like it's touching right there. It's not. So I have to make sure that's solid. This leg is not solid. So again, I'm, I'm switching over to select tool so I can Pull the lines over. So here's a part where there's a few pixels that I didn't color in. So this is when. Uh, if you have a different color for your background, you can see the details. I want to start to color this, maybe the same sort of idea, very simple light source, left and right. The left side is where the light is coming from. The right source is the furthest part from the light. So obviously with a way more complex shape over here, but just to kind of give you a thought here, um, you have to think even more complex with this kind of a thing because you've got the you've got the bright part that will be on the head and you've got the dark part of the head then you've got the body and the legs and everything so it can be very complex very quickly <clears throat> but before i color um here's something very interesting if I combine the brush tool with the line tool, that can make they can possibly make it very easy for me to color my characters. So let's say I'm gonna be very simple here and make you know the bright color over here and then the dark color over here. With the line tool or with the with the pencil tool, let's say with something very obvious like some red color or whatever. If I make a line like this, and then make another line like this to make this very obvious. I drew the main character with the brush tool. Then I switched to the pencil tool, and I'm going to sort of draw to delineate big shapes. And this looks horrible, but the point of this is that now when I fill in a color with the paint bucket, there's a there's a delineation right here in my colors. If I didn't have this line here, I filled in a color, obviously it would go all the way there. But with a line, with a line, I set sort of like the edge of how far my color will go right here. I don't, I don't want to add more outlines, but I want the color to end at a certain place. I want the dark color here. Here. So you see that fox head left closer to the light source, brighter, right? Further from the dark source, from the light source, darker. These lines, of course, 
should not be there. And the amazing thing of animate is lines or strokes and fills do not combine ever. They're two different types of tools. So what that means is I drew these lines with the pencil. They're, they're strokes. I drew the rest with fills. If I double click that line that I drew on the face, double click and then delete, line goes away completely and there's no empty gaps. Double click that line that I drew there. Double click to select, delete on the keyboard. There's no gaps. And the point of that was to separate these pieces where I can do some of this cell shading style. We'll look at other styles of coloring, but this flat color cell shaded style, I needed to differentiate where the color will be. I started it there, <clears throat> but if I switch to the line tool, just one moment, and then kind of go in here, okay, I need a place right here because the head is going to be rounded and I need a line over here. And now when I fill in color here, the uh, color will only go this far and the bright color this far. Select tool, double click that temporary line, delete it. Double click that temporary line, delete it. Now I've got this starting to shade it. Question here. There you go. So here's introducing even more concepts and complexity where the um, where the colors might be. See this tail over here again. As you take these art classes and paint the bowl of fruit, you will get better and better at this. Very simply for this class, if you're a bit more of a beginner, you can keep it simple. Left parts of the thing are a little brighter, closer to the light source. Right side of the things are a little bit darker, further from the light source. Um, this tail over here. So with the, I drew, it with, I drew everything with the brush tool. Now I'll switch over to the pencil tool and I'll kind of mark off a part over here mark off a part over here. These lines will be deleted later. And I'm drawing them with a red line. It doesn't matter the color. It's a different kind of a tool. Strokes and fills are separate. They won't interact. They won't cause gaps. But the point is I have separated parts of my strokes or fills, that is, with strokes. So that then when I double click the stroke, the pencil, delete on the keyboard, double click delete. I'm starting to give some shadow there. Technically, that part of the tail is closer to the rump. So there should be a shadow there, not a highlight technically, but again, the complexity of all of this can get very complex quickly, but dividing up the character is with the line tool, Let's see here, the, the stomach underneath. Maybe I'm going to delineate a little part right here to be shadowed. Fill in color. Maybe that leg is further also, so fill, in, it, fill it in with the dark color. Double click to select and then delete the pencil. Get the little shadow in the stomach. This part of the head technically is casting a shadow right below the neck. So I want to delineate an area over here somewhere, fill it in with that. And I'm using the same colors over and over. Again, the it's so simple, but that eyedropper tool is so useful. Once you set colors, keep clicking on your own color with the with the eyedropper so that you select the, the, the same color, the correct color, to use it consistently. Select the pencil, delete it. Now I've got a shadow underneath the neck. Notice it's very subtle, done on my color palette, there's these two color boxes, one on top, one below, but the one here is the, the one here is the fill color, the insides, the one over here is the stroke color, the outsides, one is the brush tool, one is the pencil tool. 
if your color is not working, make sure you you're selecting the color that you that you expect to be working with with the tool that you're working with. So at this point, give this some practice for a moment. Draw whatever. Use the use the pencil tool to then mark colors or mark sections to then colorize light and shadow. Let's say here, this leg, left side closer to the light source, right side further from the light source. So I marked off a piece of the leg part here. I will get then my highlight color here, then select, double click that to delete it. Again, if you're selecting your line and then deleting and all the lines go away, you're using the wrong tool. The brush tool was my first pass at the drawing. And then I'm using the pencil tool to create these lines to divide up the color to add cell shading style color. Then when I select the pencil lines, delete, those delete, nothing else. Even if this pencil line were the exact color as my outline, see like that, all of those look like they're the exact same color, but they were drawn with different tools. So if I select that line, it still only deletes that line. These that were drawn with the brush tool, I click this one line, all the lines got selected because it's a brush tool, they all delete. So very, very nuanced, which you'll get used to as you use this tool. So we have the lab times to remind you, Mondays after class, three to four, we're going to have lab time if you want to stay and work. We're still trying to decide the other days, probably Tuesday, uh, but that still hasn't fully been locked in just yet. Uh, the assignments are due on Tuesday so that you have that lab time on Monday. You can turn them in early, of course, but you're going to get good at this by practicing. Um, work on this for a moment. We'll move on for a bit in a bit. Just practice this a little bit. Call me or the assistants over if you need some help. I hope this is making sense as you practice.
Right. So here I drew a character uh, brush tool kind of quickly with my Wacom pen tablet. So you could use then the software, like overall, I think the lines came out nice. But remember, you can do the select all or pieces of your lines and then go with this, um, what is this square here? But you could you could do a selection and then um, smoothen it, straighten it and you get different results. And in my case, okay, so I was drawing the hair over here and here, okay, there's the eyebrows and then there's the hair and then there's the other ear. So obviously, depth-wise and such, the hair should be in front of that ear and this eyebrow, but all the lines overlap. So in my case, I need to fix this, and there's several ways. People often want to use the eraser tool, but I, I really don't think the eraser tool is that good in Animate. Instead, I would manipulate the lines with the selection tool. So in my case here, so this is going to vary with everyone, but I've got... Again, don't think about these as individual lines and so forth and pieces like an ear and an eye. Think of them as just blobs of color. And so I've got this curve of the hair happening here and these I need to get rid of these lines. So here's one way, this is very interesting. If I grab the corner where this intersects and I pull this corner over here, overlapping, okay, I've cut that piece away. If I grab this corner and pull it and overlap it over here, cut that piece away. Now, this is a separate piece that I can just click delete. Now, I will do that again over here, make the make the piece overlap. That then separates that, and then I can delete. So now I've got that piece of the hair that is properly ahead of the ear, ahead of the eyebrow, that a moment ago was overlapped like this. And yes, I could try to get the eraser tool and go in here and fiddle with it, so forth but I really think manipulating the actual lines. Oftentimes grabbing a corner and overlapping it with another corner does the result, or grabbing it a sort of an edge and pulling the edge over so that it overlaps, that might give you a better bit of a curve. So you see here, this one line that I drew as I did earlier two hours ago, whatever line that you draw has a left side and a right side, top and bottom. And I'm manipulating the, the left side of this piece of the line I'm grabbing that edge and pulling it over here, pulling it, pulling it, overlapping it like that. And it did that, it did that sort of erasure in a way. Like that, pull that over and that stray piece, delete it. <clears throat> if I then again want to go with every single nuance, okay, on this part, I don't like that. I like the curves and the lines, but I don't like that there's this big one slash of, of a line. So again, I could get the eraser tool, but why not try to see what happens if you grab the edge of a corner, pull the edge over this far like that. So now that that, that part away, I can then further curve that a little bit or undo. I could instead grab it from the curve part here, pull the curve up. And again, yeah, it's very interesting how when these lines overlap on top of each other, they they blend into each other, they cut out of each other. It takes a moment to kind of practice with it to kind of see what really happens. Pull that this far over here to give that curve, pull it over here to cut it away, it's gone. If I really, really, really need that corner to be perfectly smooth, you can make a selection of that corner and see what happens if you go with the smooth option. Obsess over every pixel. Right here, this is not connected. If I try to fill in color here, this is not gonna this is not gonna fill in color. It's not connected. But what if I go to the edge somewhere here and pull the edge down somewhere here so that now it overlaps, not all the way through, because that'll give you weird results. How far do I need to go? Practice with it. You'll see what looks good to you, what is correct to you. This eye line went too far into the nose. Okay, I'm going to grab this edge, pull the curve over somewhere around here. That looks good. Delete this final little piece. Do I want to get rid of these seven pixels for the eye or not? But they can go in and manipulate those pieces. 
the head is not touching here. This eyebrow is not touching the rest of the body. Therefore, the color will not fill. All that connecting. Stylistically, do I need the, the cheek tufts to connect to the rest of the head or not? That's that's there an artistic choice. It's not wrong or right if the if the line ends there. Artistically, maybe I want that. Or artistically, I do want the line to connect. That's using the tool to get it to do what you want. These lines over here, okay. I've got the, the cheek connecting with the neck part. One line has to be dominant just for the dimensionality of it. So probably I will pull it here. So now that line of the cheek is dominant over the neck. The neck is not connecting to the shoulder, so pull that line down. The chin is not connecting with the tooth. But want that corner tooth to be very square. Very square. So I might select a piece of it, go with straighten. Straighten is going to um, straighten. Square tooth. Through the character, I want to fill in colors before I drop in my colors, maybe thinking a little bit about where the shading and such goes. But let's say I'll fill in some basic colors. Now right here, of course, well, I'm trying to fill in the color of the head, but there's no, um, there's no, um, ending over here. I could do this a couple of ways. I can go to the brush tool and uh, complete that line, or I could go to the line tool with the pencil and temporarily put some sort of connecting line there so that then when I fill in color, there's a place that the color actually ends to. See that? There's no, there's no filled shape, so therefore color does not fill in, but if I temporarily fill in a line tool, a pencil that is, that, now there's a color there that I can fill in, and then I can select the pencil that I drew, double click, delete, and then there's, there's a um, fill shape area. The basic drawing, original character, basic colors, I want to shade it. Um, so let's backtrack a little bit to the assignment. Uh, let's look at that one more time. We still have a little bit more to talk about, but let's backtrack to the assignment just to make sure you're on track with this. You're going to create an original character. You're going to create a, a, a file, a folder for this week's work. You're going to create a file for this week's drawing with certain specifications. You're going to name it a certain thing. Use fill or stroke tool to draw an original character. Draw it all with the brush tool if you want. 
draw it all with the pencil tool if you want, combine it if you want, use any color techniques to colorize your character. You can colorize it like this, flat color, turn it in, I'm done. You can add the shading that we were starting to look at right now, and I'll further that in a moment. I want to shade the character a little bit with flat color. I'm not going to quite show you how to do gradients and that just yet. If you want to experiment it or figure it out on your own or read the Adobe tutorials or videos um, to do the shading, we'll cover shading together later. But either just basic colors of your character or do the basic shading that I showed earlier that I'll show again. Color the character. Don't just turn it in black and white. Um, draw it, color it a little bit. Export as PNG, remember, file, export, export image from the pop-up here, your preset, set that to ping 24, no transparency or else you'll get a weird color back there, no transparency. That file that you then save, that's what you're going to upload to Canvas. Within the assignment here, you're going to click the reply button, you're going to select the icon here to upload a graphic, upload an image. And then don't forget this part, which is part of the assignment. Um, upload your picture and tell us about your character. At the very least, what's its name? Something about its backstory? What's uh, two sentences or one sentence or whatever? Um, yeah, uh, Jimmy the bunny is going on an adventure at uh, the Amazon jungle. I don't know, you can say something. Um, about the character a little bit. That's the assignment. And then respond to two classmates. You're gonna see people's work. You're gonna see their characters. You might have some thoughts. Uh, ladies, assistants. Uh, so the submission is gonna be the drawing plus the little bit of the backstory of the character and then reply to two classmates. You can reply to 20 if you want, but at least two classmates a positive thing that you like about the character and something that could be improved. Again, respectfully, if you might say that, well, you know, that armor doesn't look strong enough to defeat the dragon, uh, you know, constructive criticism, or I can't really tell if the character's face is pointing straight forward or it's in profile, you know, respectfully give some feedback about the character as you will be getting as well from your classmates. 10 points due next Tuesday, the 20th. Um, let me get a, a sense of hands here uh, in the chat box. Be prepared to answer a question for me, please, here. Um, earlier, I had said, hey, let's download this file from Canvas and we'll use it as an example. We forgot to do that. We still have time. Would you like to end the lecture at this point and start to work on your own characters? Or do you want me to open up those other characters. And what I was just going to do is just trace some more and color some more and practice. So in the chat box, tell me here if you want to end the lecture at this point so you can get started with your work. Or do you want to take a break and then further practice with me as I open up my characters from Canvas? So end now or do more work, I guess, are the two options. Do more let End now or do more lecture. Those are the two, those are the two um, options. Tell me in the chat. Anyone can take a break at any point that they wish. This is college. And we usually take a break every hour or so. So we will do both. Got the votes here. Do we want to end for the day? Got one vote for ending. We want to continue with lecture. Those are the two possibilities there. Let's not do an either would work. We need a vote. There must be one president, so make sure you vote for one candidate. And lecture and end it, please. Okay, so um, I guess the votes are in. We'll end the lecture at this point. So you can stay and keep working if you wish. Um, we'll be here until four. Officially, the class ends at three-ish. If you want to leave at this point or at three, that's fine. We're going to have lab time from three to four if you want to stay until then. I'm going to end the lecture at this point. My example drawings here and such, I will upload them to Canvas, just so if you want to look at something. You have the instructions of your of the assignment, which is due next week. You have last week's assignment, which is due tomorrow. If you haven't completed that or started it, you can start it right now, and then it'll be due tomorrow. 
if I gave you any notes, if you turned it in early, check if I gave you notes. On some of you, I did say you did it wrong. So make sure you check those notes on Canvas to get a good grade. Uh, the recording will be added to Canvas later tonight once Zoom processes it. And we'll end at this point. So this is week three of CAS 125 starting to draw original characters.